my special special IG tribe and um, YouTube tribe and whoever is going to watch this um, ministration video later on. My name is Maria Banga, right, Minister Mark, and I am, what can I say, founder, Elite the Love and Healing Ministries International, is still a baby one, and um, I'm just working in obedience and doing what God, through the Holy Spirit, puts upon my heart. For example, you minister twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Can you do that? Yes, Papa. Um, you get onto this afternoon's recommitment journey for one year, 365 days, and you do daily vlogs. Can you do that? Yes, Papa. All because I have hope that he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly all what he says he's going to do for me, and I love his plans. And that's why when he asked me to give up all these things, I didn't even think twice because I have doubled enough. So before I go into um, what I want to talk about today, I just want to say a word of prayer, right? Um, it is just right and just that before we start talking in the presence of the Lord, be it virtually or in person, wherever, we just say a word and we say, Papa, thank you so much for our life. So dear Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I really want to pray to you this morning. Thank you so much for my life. Thank you so much for our lives. Thank you so much that I was able to go to court this morning. And my mother was called up so early. I was surprised, right? And it went well and everything. And I'm back home to continue working. But before then, I wanted to do this little ministration. So may the words that come out of my mouth heal more than they can hurt anybody. And may anybody who listens to them find some reason to hope and some reason to surrender it all to you and some reason to really take stock of where they are in life, especially at this moment with all what's going on in the world and what's going on in people's heads and hearts and everywhere. May this message really resonate with somebody somewhere in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Okay. So, um, thank you so much, Papa, for putting this topic on my heart exactly what's that in your hand what's that in your head what's that in your heart right what's that in your hand what are you holding what's that in your head what are you thinking what's that in your heart what are those emotions how are you feeling and stuff like that sometimes um, we do things either out of logic or out of emotions, logic, emotions, or because, well, we have it just there at our beck and call, and so we can just do sometimes without thinking, like irrationally, you know. And they have consequences. And um, it can be in the relationship areas, it can be business areas, it can be anywhere, you know, in, and then we don't like the outcome. But what if... We had thought about God before even doing any of these things. What if when the thought came, we kind of like ran to God with those thoughts and say, Hey, what are these thoughts? What if when we feel like, huh, could this be love? Huh, could this be? Huh? We are like, Hey, Papa, are you with me in this thing? What is this thing? What if? Before we use that bell to lash our child, before we hit the table with our hand, before we, you know, we said, hey, closed our eyes. What if before we walked out of that marriage, we thought for a second and we were like, have I done all I could do? Uh, is God with me on this? Or what if before we kept staying in there, when our own lives were at stake, we prayed about it and we said, God, just show me. It might not be your way that I stay in here, actually. So am I forcing things? Am I just exposing myself to more and more trauma and danger and abuse and all of those things? Am I jeopardizing my own mental health? So there is a lot of what if involved. And I, and, and I just got this little verse uh, uh, from the Bible, um, Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. When God wanted to use Moses, Moses was 40 years old. It's like when we get to that age, I'm 43. There's some kind of 
you know, enlightenment, awakening, it's some kind of something that happens to us. And if we miss it at that stage, then what's the point? I don't know. So I'm just like grateful that I've really got into that stage in my life where I take my time and I step back. You know, like I just left court and my friends were like, ah, my colleagues who have not seen me for long. Whoa, man, where were you? Ah, I'm gone. Come to my sacred space, do my ministration, walk my walk, read my books, cook food for my children, stay me quiet. This is the stage where I am in my life. Now, this is my season. And because I love myself so much, I don't just want to, 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 to be doing whatever, wasting my time and fooling around with whoever and all of those kind of things, you know, entertaining people anyhow and, and stuff. No. Or doing just whatever, maybe for the sake of money, fame, all of those things. Eh, eh. I just come and stay me quiet here. I mean, what do I have? I give it to God. God asked Moses, what is that in your hand? Moses said, a rod. God said, throw it down. Because God wanted to use what he had in his hand to show him his power. To show him what he could do through him if he gave it to him. Uh-huh. We are God's mouth and ears and hands on this in this world. So he cannot do anything to show his glory to the world without passing through any of us. And that's why we are called laborers and workers in his vineyards and vessels. What do we want him to do? Send Jesus again? So that we do what? Crucify him? That one time is not enough. You remember what he told Abraham, uh, um, Lazarus? Oh, that rich man, sorry, not Lazarus. Well, they have all the prophets. They didn't listen to them. Uh, is it Lazarus that they're going to listen to? Although he still ended up sending Jesus. And what did we do? People go through so much hurt. Recently, with one dead by suicide after the other, like maybe every week, I don't know how many people and all of those things. Because the ones we see or we hear of, it's nothing as compared to the ones we don't hear of. So much trauma going on in the world. So much. What's that on your heart? What is it? What is it that you cannot take to God? He says, come to me, all you who labor and weary and heavy laden. It means that he knows that people will be people will be laboring because, oh, we want to achieve, acquire, acquire, buy, 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 own, own, own. Who is who in America? Who is who in Cameroon? Who is who among the first 20, the first 50, the first 100, the most performer of, of, of under 20? All of those things. Okay, good and fine. That's what you want. But me, that's not what I want. I used to, maybe long ago, and I accumulated a lot of trauma in the process. And now I'm spending my time chasing God now. Papa, heal me. Heal me one more time, oh Lord. Some people might not want that. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But I know that there are some people who want that. Because sometimes when you've been through stuff and you've gone through so much and you have so much and yet you don't have that peace and that serenity nothing helps so add the money add the clothes add the shoes add the whatever add the sex add the patterns add the everything that nothing will give you serenity you lie down on whatever kind of mattress you will not sleep you will go to what kind of a hotel go on whatever vacation all of that you will not sleep so what is it on your heart? What is it in your head? What is it in your hand? Throw it down. I saw this thing, the path of trauma healing. I, I really, really loved, just resonated with me. And this is something I also do. And I'm going to share one very recent personal experience, you know, and how I, I just follow this. Because the trauma doesn't have to be some big and long ago trauma and all of the Anything that causes you distress. And that is like it's going to, it's affecting the way you are moving in this life and all of that. That is trauma. Affecting the way you behave and think and all of that. For me, that is trauma. And I live with post-traumatic stress disorder, so I can identify trauma. The first part of trauma healing, according to this um, graphic, is observe. 
Observe your memory of the traumatic event, listen to your body, acknowledge what your body is telling you. And I'm going to use my personal experience as I go along each part. So there's this, I don't know if I call the man a young man or an old man, whatever, you know, people can say whatever. You cannot really tell from somebody's face sometimes how old they are, right? So there's this guy, you know, who approached me on social media um, two weeks ago and oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, la, 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 la. and they were already so convinced, their spirit ministered to them and everything. And I was like, hey, God, oh, which one is this again? Ha, I didn't know that this thing would happen so soon. Oh, me, I'm on this journey. I'm trying to focus. I'm focusing. And I don't want me distraction. And I kept telling this person, I don't want distraction. What do you want? And so I observed and something similar had happened to me last year in November. And you know, sometimes because you are like, well, well nah, your body starts to act and they start to be like happy. They start to already dream about when you will be lying down together and you'll be putting your head on his chest and stuff like that. This person even went as far as when we did the video call like the second time or so, they had no top on. And I quickly told her, no, 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 I'm uncomfortable. Like if we are talking and you don't also see me, I don't have a top on and you're looking at my breast. What is that? I don't know you. I'm not that relaxed already to be seeing you without a top on. Please put on your t-shirt. I don't want that. And it never happened again. You know, so I, I was able to observe. I was able to think about, you know, other traumatic events like because I've had relationship sagas upon relationship sagas. So I don't want any more. So I'm very careful when somebody approaches me now. And so I could listen to what my body was telling me. And I proceeded to understand that what was happening or what had happened was not my fault. It's not because I just, I'm, I'm, I'm freedom and love. So I just love that I cannot, I'm, I'm, I'm taking advantage of, you know, by all kinds of people. The devil is forever roaming, searching, who to kill, destroy, all of that. So no, it's not my fault that I am me. It's not my fault that I just love and all of those things. But... I need to understand this. And one of the ways for me to understand something, frankly speaking, as I'm growing spiritually, and I've been doing this for a while, is to fast and stop communication with this person for a minimum three days. I want to listen. And God tells me things. Sometimes I will want to do my own. Or sometimes I'll be like, but this particular time, he said, yes, you can date. Because I wasn't even sure that I wanted to date. So he said, no. Being on an abstinence with commitment journey doesn't mean you cannot date. You can date. But that's all he said. You know, I was already excited thinking the date would lead to marriage. But no, the date was so that I could learn or I could put into practice what I had learned last year. And I could quickly identify those tendencies. Had I not taken the time to understand and seek to understand more and more, follow my own memory verse, Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6, lean not on my own understanding, but on God's own acknowledge God. You know, I used to bombard this person with God and my journey. I was sending the daily blogs and he never made comments. And I was like, Hey, this is somebody who tells me that he fellowships at RCCG, but I, I don't hear him talk nothing about God, nothing about when to service on Sunday. I've been asking, did you go for fellowship service? No, I had work. What work? But I don't see them in any work setting. The conversation, nothing, the lecture, all of that thing. And I was like, Hey, I told him, my friend, you, you, you can't joke with me. You can't scam me. You can't. So if that's what you are coming around here looking for, please just shift. And their reply was just whom. And then I just knew, hey, seriously on Sunday, I did a steam bath for 13 minutes instead of 10. And God told me, okay, it's time. Close that chapter. And yesterday, Monday, I didn't even write to them to say I'm closing the chapter. I just, even I just closed. I was like, okay, Father, thank you for the lesson. Thank you for that strength. Thank you for everything. I embrace the path that hurts. I embrace this foolishness. I embrace this excitement or I embrace this whatever. I did not resent it. I felt it. The whole of yesterday, I was once more at home. You know, for three days, I've not been in the best of moods and everything. It's just today that I'm really all this excited again and everything. Yeah, I think it was all of these shifts and all of those things and having to say that again, you know, but whatever. He was in Nigeria. What a, I, I didn't I wasn't even thinking about moving to Nigeria. I was like, Father, but why are you sending me somebody? Why is somebody from Nigeria coming my way? I don't want to leave my country. I, 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 I'm just sick and tired of moving up and down and all of those kind of things. Eh, eh, pa, 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 pa. So I'm just happy that it didn't work out. The earlier, the better, right? 
So, but you have to bring it to the surface. You have to be accepting. You have to be uh, tolerating of your own oh, whatever, you know. And you have to even show some love. You know, I actually prayed for this person. I was like, Father God, I hope that this little interaction with me will actually help them. When, either now or later, you know, to really turn around and give their lives to you. You know, all these scammers, these love bumpers and these catfishers or whatsoever. What are they doing with their lives like that? Because at least this one and that other one in November and whatever, I don't think that they are less than 40. So if at this age you are still doing those kind of things, when are you going to start living some real decent life that you yourself can be proud of? Or maybe they are proud of that life. I don't know. But when I think of this guy, whether it's a hush puppy or whatever, I'm like, okay, you did all of that crap and now you're in jail. Are you happy? Is that a life you wanted to live? What is all of that? Judgment is not mine anyway. So the last thing to do is release. Release the feelings. Release it. Release it. Stop piling things up. Keeping things up. Release the emotions. Release the sensations. I have a beautiful way of releasing. I talk about it. I pray about it. I write it. I talk about it publicly. You know, and that is it. It's gone. And I have some sisters. I have my small tribe. I talk to them at the beginning. I talk to them in the middle. I talk to them at the end. And I listened to them. One said, ah, all this intensity. These guys who come to you with so much intensity. And I thought about that word. I was like, huh, Father, is this true? Could this be for real? What is all this intensity? And I thought about it and I was like, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, another one said, ask them when they fellowship. Because I didn't ask. I want to know. You know, and stop. Because sometimes I'm just like, no, you know, people can nah. And allow those things to leave your mind. You know, because your mind has to be renewed for you to be transformed. So be pushing them out by putting in new things. I am more than a conqueror. God who is with me is bigger than who, than this guy. All of those things. That's just what I was telling myself. You know, so remove it from your mind, your body, your spirit. You know, don't lose your glow. Don't be sad. Somebody said, I'm sorry. I said, no, there's nothing to be sorry about. That. I mean, I'm happy. And well, my body was never involved. My money was never involved. So I didn't lose nothing. And I just listened to something this morning um, on I, Instagram before I did this. And I want to wrap up with that, right? Um, it is this woman of God. I love listening to her. Jada Edwards, um, she and her husband, they have this um, one community church in, um, I think it's Dallas, Texas. And she was talking today about hope. And she was, um, she, she shared from... Um, Romans what 13. I hope I haven't just fumbled. Oh God, please help me. <laughs> Father, help me. This is me again. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. I need to find it. It's so important. Seriously. Bear with me. I highlighted it though. I have just highlighted so much here. I don't even know if I'm ever going to get there. But Father, Father, Father. I don't want to um, just be saying whatever. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. I need the touch of the Master. I need the touch of the Lord. Touch me one more time, O oh Lord. Father, heal me. Heal me one more time, O oh Lord. Heal me one more time, O oh Lord. 
I need the healing of the master. I need the healing of the Lord. Heal me one more time, O oh Lord. Father, save me. Save me one more time, O oh Lord. Save me one more time, O oh Lord. I need the grace of the Master. I need the grace of the Lord. Save me one more time, O oh Lord. I lost the passage and I don't just want to say something like that. Bear with me. But I know that it was Paul saying that we shouldn't give up. That um, there's so much hope assured. And yes, we come to him. He tells us that. And he promises us. David said it, right? Psalms 23. He is our shepherd. He can only lead us beside still waters. He can only lead us to calm our souls. Even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That is why whatever is in our hearts, whatever is in our head, whatever is in our hands, whatever we even feel like saying negatively about us or others, we can just throw all of those things down. Thank you so much, Father, for this ministration this morning. I really want to give you all the glory for all of that and for all what I keep learning and for all the experiences I keep having and for all what I keep sharing. For all those who were listening to me, and even if it's just one person, Papa, I thank you so much for that. And for all what you're doing in my own life, I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, see you on Sunday. Until then, God bless us all.